Money. Ba -ba -da -da. Welcome to my home, in my basement actually, but this is also your home, away from your home, if that makes sense. Uh, if you learn how to play the banjo or the mandolin or the guitar, um, I appreciate you joining me today. Today we're looking at an old, old tune. I don't know exactly when it was written, um, but it's it's been a favorite tune of mine for a long time. Um, it's got such a cool melody. It's called Grandfather's Clock, and a lot of you have heard heard it, I know, but we're actually using this tune to work on something a little bit more in depth. It's a great tune. I wanted to teach it, but a lot of my students that I see on banjo, even up into the intermediate and advanced ranges, um, are pretty entrenched with their right hand picking patterns. What I mean by that is their fingers are always designated for the same strings and many times I'll ask somebody to play a roll or play a lick that causes their middle finger to play an inside string, something other than that first D string that we're so used to playing and they're like, I can't do that, that's not what your middle finger's for. Well, there's several things that your middle finger is not for, but one of them that it is for is to play other strings on your banjo and so I want to introduce this version of Grandfather's Clock to show you how to do that. So it's chopped full of licks that are using our middle finger on the inside rolls. It's difficult to do if you've never done it before, but if you'll work through this, I promise your banjo playing will reach a new plateau because all of a sudden your right hand has broken down the barriers that you've been keeping it in for years, which is just wrong. Check out Grandfather's Clock. <laughs> That's a great tune, isn't it? Did you know, a little trivia here, that song was actually written about a washing machine. <laughs> it's very, the title's very misleading. Hey, if you're watching this on the website, um, jump on over to the Banjo tab section and print out the PDF of what you just heard. That version is actually two pages here. And what we're gonna do now is take about 20 minutes or so to go through every single measure of this version and learn how to play it. Uh, just using the split screen stuff very slowly. Then at the very end, I'm gonna play it all the way through for you from start to finish, um, where you can watch it and practice along very slowly. And then I've got, like always, uh, three different rhythm track speeds, okay, with my guitar. So after you learn it from the tabs here and from my video, then you can practice along with somebody actually playing guitar with you. Pretty cool. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube in a little while, I'll ask you to jump over to the website, or I hope you do. Become a Gold Pick member, and uh, which helps me put out these videos each and every week. Let's dive right into this one, Grandfather's Clock. Let's look there at the kickoff of the song. It's really simple. It's just a quarter note walk up. We're gonna start here on a low D string and uh, do three quarter notes. Now some of you may choose to use different fingers on your left hand than I do. Um, of course, this lesson is mainly um, concentrating on our right hand fingerings. It's very important that you follow those. Um, but as far as your left hand fingerings, I tend to use my pinky more than most people do. Um, so I will very often, if at all possible, uh, keep my first finger on the first fret and second and third and fourth and so on. I'll shift up when I, when I need to. Uh, but you're welcome here in this case to use your index finger on that second fret and your ring finger on the fourth. That's fine. It's just that I know I'm going to need these fingers down here a little later, so I don't mind using my pinky. But that was really simple. Going into measure two, we have some more simple stuff, just slowly, sounds like this. Okay, once again, I use my ping on, pinky on that fourth fret. We're gonna do another pinch in measure three with our second fret down the G string. 
Just follow on that melody. And then we're going to keep that second finger down on the second fret there into measure four and just do a slide with the forward roll. Very simple. Then two pinches to end that measure. That's just a partial C chord. I use my index and my ring finger down here just because I'm used to playing my full C chord and we'll need it here in a little while. So I just do just those two fingers. Now we start in measure five, um, kind of the whole purpose of this arrangement, and that is working with our inside rolls, which is where we're using our middle finger on our right hand to play some of the inside strings. It's something that we need to get used to, as I mentioned. Well, let's go ahead and make our partial C, another partial C chord position, middle finger down here on the second fret, index up here on the first, and let's do an inside forward roll in those inside three strings. And that's going to feel weird at first because we're so used to playing our middle finger on this high first D string there all the time. We're kind of programmed to do that. We need to get out of that habit, expand our horizons a little bit. But we're going to do an inside roll there and then jump back out and do a backwards roll, landing on our second fret there on the G string. So that whole measure sounds like this. Measure six is very straightforward. Now if I'm moving too fast for you, just keep in mind that this is more of an intermediate to advanced lesson. I have plenty of beginner lessons on the website where we cover all these basic roles and everything like that. Um, so you're welcome to go and check those out. Measure seven, we're going to get kind of in a oblong D7 shape. I'm gonna use my pinky to get this fourth fret down here and then reach up with my index to grab this first fret on the B string. That's quite a stretch there. But you can do it. Pretty straightforward. Measure eight, very straightforward. Now here in measure nine, I, instead of using my pinky on this fourth fret, this is, I'm going to shift and play my ring finger. And this will make sense in a little while. I'm gonna play my ring finger there on the fourth fret and grab the second fret of the G string with my index because of what we're going to do in the second half of this measure. We're going to do a forward roll through, it sounds like this. Okay. And then I want you to just keep the same position but shift up three frets to where you now your index rests on the fifth fret and your ring's now on the seventh fret. Okay, so it's not a big deal to jump up for this next little move. We're keeping the same spacing. And then we're going to see some more of this inside roll because this string, fifth frets play with our index. That leaves only our middle to be able to play this open B string. And then we're going to play it seventh fret with our thumb and then jump back up to play that string with our middle. So that measure all together, this is really pretty easy once you get it down and realize that it's not a big deal with your left hand. It sounds like this. Okay. 